We have multiple violent crimes to talk about this week that occurred at churches. It is not the most violent week, but there was an inordinate amount of violence that occurred at churches this week with a lot of shootings, and I want to talk about them. As with every episode that we talk about this stuff, I always give you tips and tricks that you can use to avoid something like this from happening at your church or to help yourself if you find yourself in a similar circumstance. Now, all this comes from my weekly newsletter on church crime at ChristianWarriorTraining.com, where I give you free training, free. So far, we've given $176,000 in free training over the last 10 months throughout people throughout the world. It is just phenomenal what's going on. We're hitting 28,000 people following the newsletter and getting tips and tricks on how to keep their churches safe. All right, so let's go ahead. Let's jump into it. Let's talk about what's been occurring. All right, so as you can see here, this is all of the stories that are coming out this week with some of the YouTube videos I've put out about some of the crimes that are occurring. Let's start off over here with an 11-year-old boy that was shot in the head uh, in uh, Wichita. Now, an 11-year-old boy was shot in the head early Saturday morning inside of a home in Wichita, while an occupied church nearby was also struck by gunfire. Now, the boy's injury is considered not life-threatening, which I have seen many people shot in the head. Well, not many, but I've seen a few people shot in the head that it was not major. And he was transported to the hospital. Now, his condition remains unavailable right now, but again, not life-threatening. Now, the shooting occurred around 1233 in the 14 hour block of North Lorraine. Multiple shots were fired and four people inside the church uh, that, were, that was struck all fled without being injured. Now, no arrests have been made and police are investigating the incident, including whether the shooter or shooters were on foot in a vehicle in exactly who they were targeting. Now, the police aren't giving much information about this shooting, uh, not even which church was affected. Now, there are two nearby, the reported location of the shooting, but it doesn't look like they're on the same street. So it's a bit confusing without some kind of transparency from law enforcement. Now, with that said, if you receive fire while you're in your church, move into a position of cover, not concealment. Now, cover is something that stops bullets. Concealment is something you hide behind. I can hide behind my monitor and nobody can see my head from the other side, but a bullet's going to fly right through the monitor. So that is concealment. Cover would be a brick wall, uh, something like that. Just, you know, some, some heavy piece of wood, something like that. Right. So when the shooting stops, look, uh, lock all your church doors and withdraw to the center of the church where it'll be harder for bullets to penetrate and move through. Call 911. Let them know your situation through receiving fire. And then keep monitoring your entrances to make sure nobody comes in. Start thinking about a plan about how to egress or get out of the church. If he comes through the front door, if he comes through a back door, start thinking about all the ways that you're going to flee. So lock down in place and then start thinking about a plan to jump ship and get out of there. All right. Next up, we got an armed man in a mental health crisis. Uh, he entered a church in Council Bluffs, Iowa. It led to a one-hour standoff with the police on Monday. There are no church services that were taking place at the time, and the few people that were inside were able to leave immediately and not be affected by him. Now, the man who was armed with the two guns, one long gun, one pistol, was eventually taken into custody without any injuries following negotiations with law enforcement. Now, police haven't released his name due to the nature of the incident. Now, I did do a video breakdown of this incident here on YouTube. You can go take a look at it. I gave a lot of tips and tricks about what you can do to protect yourself. I, if I was this church, I would be monitoring this man. Uh, one of the things I mention all the time is that people that are in crisis will often flee to a church because they want to find sanctuary from their problem, whether that problem is running from the police, they have demons in their head, they want to kill themselves or something like that. They're always going to flee to a church to seek safety. If a man walks in with a long gun and a, and a pistol, a lot of Christians are going to want to talk to that person and pray with them. Pray for them outside. Get out of there, leave, and then go pray outside. Don't stay there, okay? They're mentally unstable, and I don't want to see anything bad happening to you. Um, I would monitor this man, like what happens, because you just don't want him coming back to the church in future days. Uh, it is something that that church should monitor. All right, next up. We got a shooting that happened in Aloha, Oregon, in a church parking lot. Now, three people were arrested totally uh, in this incident, 
with a shooting that occurred in the parking lot of Eden Presbyterian Church in Aloha, Oregon on September 2nd. Now, I went and looked up this church. It looks like it's a Korean Presbyterian church. Uh, the incident, which took place around 6 a.m., involved gunfire among at least four people, resulting in two people being wounded in nearby homes being struck by bullets. Now, Mateo Green, 21, and a 17-year-old, both from Portland, were previously arrested and charged with second-degree attempted murder and first-degree assault. A third suspect, 21-year-old woman from Portland, was taken into custody on charges of hindering prosecution and tampering with physical evidence. The investigation remains ongoing and further arrests and charges are possible. Now, there isn't much a church can do to protect itself when a group decides to do a shootout in your church parking lot. Uh, again, people will seek refuge at a church when they're running from a problem, like people trying to kill you or trying to people trying to settle a score with you. You just want to make sure that you have a 4K video system to help identify threats and suspects and make sure you maintain situational awareness while you're at church by occasionally looking outside at your surroundings for changes in the area. It's called atmospherics, have the atmospherics change, right? So you look outside and everything looks fine. You look outside at five minutes later, and now you see a group of people that don't match the type of people that go to that church, and they look like they're having a tense issue. You want to start monitoring it instead of just going, oh, there's four people in the parking lot, and you want to start watching. Uh, if you are in the church and you see gunfire, just like the last incident, you want to go ahead and re uh, lock, make sure the doors are locked when the gunfire stops. Retreat to the middle of the church and call 911 and let them know what your problem is at that particular time. All right, next up, we got a, a deputy that was injured during an arrest of a person that was harassing church members in North Carolina. James Zoll was arrested by Madison County uh, Sheriff's Office deputies after allegedly harassing church members before and during a service in Madison County, North Carolina. During the arrest, Zoll reportedly assaulted a deputy, resulting in injury and was subsequently charged with assault on a government official, second-degree trespassing and resisting delaying and obstruction. Now, Sheriff Buddy Harwood emphasized that any individuals who interfere with or harass churches and their members are going to face prosecution to the fullest extent of the law. I'm just looking at this guy's picture, and I'm, I, I, I've dealt with a lot of meth field individuals, and I'm wondering if there is some kind of uh, drug connection with this particular. If you have somebody that is creating a disturbance at your church, go remove them. Tell them, hey, my favorite phrase was always like, hey, this is a church. This is God's house. We shouldn't be doing this here. Why don't we take it outside and then move? And it's great. You get them out of the church, have somebody lock the doors behind you and carry on that conversation outside. In almost all states, it is a crime to interrupt a church service. And that would include like yelling, standing up, yelling, stuff like that. So uh, good for good for this uh, church for go ahead calling law enforcement and getting them involved. Next up, we got a man that was stabbed at a San Antonio church festival with a suspect at large. Now, a man was stabbed in the face and arm during the Divine Providence Parish Festival at Divine Providence Catholic Church in San Antonio on the night of September 1st. The incident occurred outside the festival at Parasol Park which was being used uh, for overflow parking. Now, the suspect fled the scene on foot, and the victim was transported to the hospital in stable condition. Local councilwoman Dr. Adriana Roca Garcia expressed concern over the violence at the community event and called for increased security measures. San Antonio Police Department is currently investigating and urges anyone with information to come forward. Now, this is the third violent crime at a church festival this summer. Now, if you have a festival, you're going to need to plan for security not just because of regular violence, but also to preempt any kind of terrorist activity that the FBI and myself have been warning you about for the past year. We have hard times ahead of us, and people have been coming in and striking at Christians at their festivals all over the world. So when you hold that festival, you probably advertised about it. Everybody knows that there's gonna be a, a group of Christians in one place, and that's gonna cause some problems. Now, I don't know if gangs or drugs was involved in this particular incident, but I've told you on several occasions before about how criminals are still Christians, and we do want them to come to church because we want them to stop their sinful ways. So they can still come to church, but you can go take classes over uh, ChristianWarriorTraining.com. They are all free. This is all free training that you can take that breaks down to help you identify gang members within your church so you can have conversations with them about their sinful ways, about how they can repent and stop the evil that they're doing. And at the same time, find out, because remember, I told, I've told you in the past, 
when they go every every person that wants to get that gang member knows that he goes to church at 10 30 in the morning on sunday at a specific church and your church can be targeted so you're going to want to talk to them about those particular issues and what what you should worry about are they going to be truthful more than likely not but you're going to have to intervene and tell them hey you can't be shooting people up and then coming here on a Sunday and repent and then go back. It doesn't work that way. So work with them, talk to them about some of the issues that are going to come at the church because people are looking for them and just keep an extra eye out. All right, next up, we got the Diocese of Scranton. They removed a priest after credible allegation of child molestation. Now, the Diocese of Scranton has removed a priest that was 65 years old from ministry after a credible allegation of child molestation dating back to the late 1970s and early 80s. Now, the diocese received a report on August 22nd, 2024, accusing the priest of inappropriate sexual contact with a minor over several years. Now, following an investigation and a review by the diocese review board, they deemed the claim credible and suspended the priest from all ministerial duties. The case has been reported to civil authorities and the diocese has committed to fully cooperating with any law enforcement investigation. The priest who most recently served at Most Holy Trinity Parish had held numerous positions within the diocese over his career. It is important to note that pedophiles don't molest just one kid. They leave a trail of victims everywhere that they've been. So if you find that one of your workers or your volunteers has committed a heinous act like this after moving on, you want to start an internal investigation to determine if there are any victims at your church because more than likely, there are gonna be multiple victims there. So you also wanna be transparent with your process and let your congregants know what you're doing, that he was arrested or he, that there is this ongoing case. We're looking internally to see if anything is going on and then ask them if you have information, please come forward so we can talk to you. That lets your victims at your church know it's okay to come on out and talk to them because most of these crimes go unreported. So you have a lot of a former Gateway employee charter uh, employee charged with child molestation. Now, a former Gateway Church member in Frisco, Texas, has been charged with molesting three children under the age of 11 on multiple occasions, according to an arrest warrant affidavit from Howard County, Indiana. The accused, a 65-year-old man, faces two counts of child molestation for incidents that reportedly occurred between 2020 and February 2023, including at a family member's home in Kokomo, Indiana. Now, the church stated that while the man attended Gateway Church, he was never employed by them, and he was not to return pending the investigation. A jury trial scheduled for October 4th. This case follows a series of resignations of church leaders in North Texas, including the founder of Gateway Church, Robert Morris, who stepped down after admitting to past sexual abuse. Now, look, this isn't the first time offense for this guy. At his age, he's going to have a trail of victims going back decades. Now it's time to determine if he was at your church and to start looking into his behavior there. And again, you're looking for more victims. You are letting people know you're doing this investigation. It is totally transparent and they are looking for potential victims within the church and feel free to come forward so we can help you. And then you're going to connect them with authorities, meaning the police, and then hooking them up with counseling and resources and so on, because that's what we do as Christians. We don't hide our dirt. We seek justice, just like the Bible says, and we provide aid and comfort to those that have been done wrong. Next up, we got an arson to talk about. Investigators have confirmed that an arson was the cause of a fire that damaged our Savior Lutheran Church in Waltport, Oregon, on August 12th. Now, the fire began around 6 a.m. and was first detected by a fire alarm in the church sanctuary. Finally, a win for churches with fire alarms. Every week, I tell you guys that you need a fire alarm and a burglar alarm and a 4K video system in your church. Awesome. Somebody finally had one. So fire crews from Seal Rock Fire, along with mutual aid from nearby departments, contained the blaze within 10 minutes because they had an alarm and the alarm went off and everybody knew to get there. That's why it was quick. The structure did suffer significant damage, particularly on the west side where church offices were located. Investigators determined multiple ignition points outside the building, suggesting the use of an accelerant. The investigation is ongoing and authorities urge anyone with information to contact the Lincoln County Sheriff's Office. And church services are temporarily being held at alternate locations as the community recovers from this incident. Again, score this score one for the churches that have fire alarms. Again, every week, I tell you that you should have gotten a fire burglar alarm yesterday. Today is not too late. Tomorrow 
is too late. So kudos to, kudos to the Lutheran Church in Walport for heeding our warning. The only question I have for you, if you don't have one, is why are you waiting to get one in your church? Arson is the number two crime for churches across the United States. Number one crime, obviously, is is uh, property crime like vandalism and theft. Number two is arson. That is unreal. A large portion of arson crimes in the United States are people burning churches. All right, next up, a pastor was sentenced to prison for $3.5 million COVID relief fraud. Now, Rudolph Brooks, the 48-year-old founder and senior pastor of Kingdom Tabernacle of Restoration Ministries in Washington, D.C., has been sentenced to 18 months in federal prison for fraudulently obtaining over $3.5 million in COVID-19 paycheck protection programs. Now, Brooks from Cheltenham, Maryland, submitted falsified documents to secure loans for multiple businesses under his control, including a car dealership and his ministry between April 2020 and April 21. He used these funds for personal expenses, including purchasing a Tesla and properties in Maryland. In addition to prison time, Brooks was sentenced to two years of supervised release in order to forfeit over $2 million. The Tesla and the real estate acquired with the misappropriated funds. The case was prosecuted by the District of Maryland Strike Force as part of the national effort to combat pandemic-related fraud. Now, I think it's clear that pastors or any believers in Christ should not be committing crimes like this or crimes at all. It is obviously disappointing to see something like this pop up in the news. This, my friends, keeps people from coming to church. People read this. I was one of them. I was a cop, and I was arresting pastors for DUI drugs uh, and for other heinous crimes, and it soured me, and it kept me from coming to church for a long time. I realized that was wrong. I realize that there are sinners in every church, but when you're consumed with crime on a daily basis, that was just one of the things that kept me from coming. And I worry that regular people see this and they will not come to Christ because they see this stuff in the news. So control your people, my friends. If you see them doing wrong, put them on the right path. I do occasionally see fellow Christians starting to stray from the path that they're supposed to be on and their walk is not right with the Lord. I will make sure that I come talk to them. I remember reading something in the Bible about, about your brothers and coming to talk to them to help them keep them on the right path. You want to make sure you do the same thing, okay? All right, let's go on to international stories. We should be tracking international stories because uh, it is a predictor of things that are going to happen here in the United States. Now, a gang attacked a man at a church festival in Chennai in India. Now, a man was attacked by a group of individuals during a church festival in India leading to the arrest of one suspect. The incident occurred at a local church celebration where the victim was reportedly assaulted by a gang for reasons that are still under investigation. I can tell you right now, I've talked to Christians in India and they are persecuted on a regular basis and the government hides a lot of that persecution or it seems like it encourages it sometimes. So one arrest out of a gang of people attacking. Come on, man, I know the police are bad in India, but not that bad. All right, so police have apprehended one person involved in the attack and are continuing to search for others. Authorities are working to determine the motive behind the attack and ensure the safety of church attendees. I am just assuming that it's because he was a Christian at a Christian festival and they didn't like that. All right, so if you have a festival, it's important to post security up where people are entering. You wanna funnel people into just few entrances to where you are actually monitoring it. And if people come in that look like disruptors or look like they might have violence in their heart, Make sure you have a plan to contact them and to remove them if you need to, to help protect the Christians that are there celebrating. So with good situational awareness, you're going to know what to look for and you can stop before trouble starts. Now, I have that class for free over here, Assessing Threats at ChristianWarriorTraining.com. You can take this course on finding danger signs. And again, it is all free. I don't charge you anything because I want to make sure that you keep your church, no matter where you are in the world, I want you to make sure that it's safe. If you want to support what I'm doing here, you can do a paid subscription over at ChristianWarriorTraining.com, but you don't have to. God will find a way to help me continue this ministry. I am not really worried about it. But if after you've given to your church, you've taken care of your family, and you've taken your family on vacation, and you've done all those nice things, if you have a spare $8 a month or $80 a year, it would go a long way over here. It helps support our mission and keeping churches safe. But again, you don't have to. God will provide a way, right? God always does. It's funny how that works. All right, 
The historic French church was destroyed by fire and a suspect was arrested. Now, this happened at the Church of the Immaculate Conception in St. Omer, France, and was heavily damaged by a fire on September 2nd, what authorities believe was a deliberate arson attack. France has been having a lot of problems with anti-Christian violence in their country, probably because they let in so many Muslims and the Muslims are starting to displace the Christians. And now we're seeing some persecution that we usually see reserved for countries that aren't in the West. Now, a 39-year-old man known to the local police for similar offenses has been arrested in connection with the incident. The fire, which began in the church's sacristy, where evidence of a break-in was found, destroyed both the roof and the bell tower, requiring 90 firefighters to extinguish the blaze. Now, approximately 50 people were evacuated, and the local mayor assured residents there was no risk of pollution from the fire. Oh, thank goodness there was no risk of pollution from the fire. Ooh. All right. So <laughs> this incident is part of a growing trend of suspected or confirmed arson tax on churches in France, often driven by anti-Christian motives. Now, look, the U.S. has been lucky to not have such an anti-Christian crime occurring. However, that is changing. Our crimes against Christians in America are exponentially increasing. And I'm seeing that because I put out crimes every week. I'm seeing that myself. Now we should be watching what is happening in Europe and elsewhere, and we need to take heed to that. All right, thousands of Christians were targeted and killed in Nigeria, according to a report. Now a new report by Open Doors International highlights the escalating violence against Christians in Nigeria, where thousands have been killed in recent years. Now the report, titled No Road Home reveals that in 2023 alone, 4,900 Christians were murdered due to their faith, which is a figure higher than any other country globally. I do have a lot of followers from Nigeria. Nigeria, you guys are the number two followers behind the United States for this channel. And Nigeria is, for the uh, um, Americans and the Canadians watching this, Nigeria is often considered a no-go zone for Christians, meaning like it's a place that's very hard to convert people to Christianity because it is so closed for Christians. They are having a very tough time. All right, now the violence is primarily attributed to Islamist terror groups like Boko Haram, ISIS West Africa, and Fulani militants, and has resulted in mass displacement and severe living conditions for Christian communities. Now, the report also notes that Christians face forced conversions, targeted killings, and destruction of property, with 3.4 million Christians now living as internally displaced persons. Now, Open Doors calls for global awareness and intervention to address this particular crisis. Now, look, if you know of a reputable organization that's helping Christians in Nigeria, put it in the comments for me. I would like to give some money from Christian Warrior to a uh, to a good Christian group that is helping Christians in Nigeria. It is hurting my heart to see them under so much persecution. God bless all of you that are in Nigeria watching this right now and living under that persecution. I don't think that Americans quite understand how bad you have it. So I'd like to see all of us find that, that charity. And I would like all of us to don donate to help these people being persecuted for their faith in Jesus Christ. And we need to help them the best that we possibly can. Now, look, as an example, I talked about if you want to help my ministry, certainly head over to ChristianWarriorTraining.com and do a paid subscription. I would rather you help one of these uh, one of these uh, one of these ministries helping people in Nigeria. I think that is a priority right now. Uh, there is a lot of killing of Christians over there. Nigeria, if you guys are watching this, sound off in the comments. Uh, let me know what you need school-wise, like training-wise, that I can do to help you. I have many missionaries, uh, friends that were in that area, and we are working together to figure out the best way that you guys can protect yourselves. And we want to relay that information to you and do it online. So uh, let me know in the comments or you can always reply to one of my emails that I send out on ChristianWarriorTraining.com and give me that information as well. I can't get back to every single person because I get so much information every day, but I do my best and try to make that happen. Now, look, that's all I've got for this week. It has been a remarkable week for violence. Um, there was actually one more that I forgot to put in there. I'll get it in there later today, but it's uh, uh, Pastor Greg Locke in Tennessee was attacked where somebody fired 30 to 50 rounds at his home and, and he showed up a minute after the gunman showed up. So we know that there's a lot of violence like that occurring 
we have that. There's so much coming. I can't even put it all out because it's just coming in so quick. So when you see that information, a lot of you are going to want to lock your church down. Please don't lock your church down. There's no need for metal detectors. There's no need to keep people away. We want people to come to Christ. And we don't want to put any kind of impediment in front of them from doing that. So how are we going to do that? You and I are going to have to work a little bit harder at watching our doors and monitoring inside to make sure nobody gets hurt. That's it. We just have to work much harder. And I have all that free training over at Christian Warrior Train, ChristianWarriorTraining.com to help you get the training you need to stop the violence from occurring at your church. There are two things I want you to do before we leave here. I want you to pray unceasingly for the safety of our churches, for the safety of our pastors, our ministers, for the safety of all the Christians overseas that are being persecuted by Islamic extremists. And then the other second thing that you can do to protect yourself is to remember your ABCs, always be caring.